What have you done? They said it best. We'll never stop. Not until we're cold and dead in the ground. Still fighting the good fight. It is true that all we hold dear is fated to fade away, but that is no reason for us to forsake it. To take what steps we may, and thus mark the road for those who would follow, to strive for the best of all futures. Be this not also thy purpose? Weary wanderer, you've no fight left to fight, no life left to live. I am in a flurry of emotion right now, by the way. Surrender to your fate, and let the transformation take you. Now, Reed! Now! It. You have to hold on. If you had the strength to take another step, could you do it? Could you save our worlds? You know that I could. I'm never alone. We stand together. Champions from beyond the rift, heed my call. I challenge you, Emmett Selk. Sorry. Sacred. My friends. Oh, thank God Reem's okay, too. Such infernal strength! Come on, together we can do this! Come on! That works too! Thank you! Forgive me, Emmett. Is it over? I promise. Tis good to see you awake, Gratia. You were 
hoping for the Asia. Body and soul reunited at last. I came only to remove that which ruins my sport. I will not have my prey stolen by your petty wars and cowardly weapons. You would kill me just for that. I need no other reason. Any and all who interfere with my hunt will not do so twice! Xenos! <laughs> How are all you beautiful people doing today? This is Joe the Platformer here, formerly Offended Gasp, for those of you that are sub to me from the old Final Fantasy stuff. And we're bringing you part 43, which is going to be the 5.1 premiere of Shadowbringers. I may or may not put a little recap thing at the beginning of this, because I kind of want to. Um, but you shouldn't be watching this if you haven't already seen what happened at the end of 5.0 slash Shadowbringers. So anyway, I don't want to wait. I'm scared of Elidibus. So let's go ahead and do this. Sorry, I literally completely forgot <laughs> that we went back and talked to Tataru. Shaken resolve. No, what the fuck? Why is it called that? Tataru seems eager to make up for lost time. Show soft gods, it's good to see you. I hope your being here means you've had your fill of rest. <laughs> Not as much as 40 winks, truth be told. More than my fill. I'm ready to take care of things here. Well, you've certainly earned it. Not much has happened since your last visit. I had planned for you to meet that helper I told you about, but he refuses to answer his Lake Pearl. I do hope he's alright. We've been exchanging messages with the Eorzean Alliance throughout, though. They say the fighting has finally stopped at the Grim uh, Gimlet Dark, and that the Empire shown no sign of movement. Zeno scares me. <laughs> Which means we might actually have a moment to ourselves for a change. Seeing as you're back, maybe you could tell me more about your time in the first? Of course. Great. Oh, and if you don't mind, I'd like to ask... Flamine! <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce that. To join us. She wants to know what happened to Minfilia, and I think it's best she hears it from you. We'll meet you on the terrace at the House of Splendors. I love this game! Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I lost my mentor crown because my Dark Knight is not um, level 70 or 80 yet. But I've been playing Samurai again and some other stuff, so I've just, I kind of like slowed down on it. Shosov, my, it has been too long. Dataru did mention that I would be joining you, did she not? Of course, yeah, she did. I need to blah blah blah, stuff Minfilia. Thank you. Words cannot well express how I have longed to know more of the first. This world Minfilia has sacrificed so much to save. But come, rest your feet. Tataru should be arriving shortly. It's gonna be voiced? Doesn't look like it, but it could be. It's not. And so Minfilia chose to pass on her gifts to the next oracle. This girl who Thancred named Dreen. To have such a burden thrust upon her as a child. Only to embrace it when given the choice. In that respect, they are quite alike. It would seem her legacy is indeed in capable hands. Shosov, might I ask a favor of you when next you return to the first? To tell Reen what I cannot. To tell her... Thank you. Ah. Yeah, I'll do just that. You can count on it. And I would offer thanks to you as well for saving or for staying with her to the end. Begging your pardon, but could I have a word? Real, I hope you're here to tell me you've received word from our helper. I wish. Nay, I've not had a peep out of him. 
And it's been a good long while too now. Or now, <laughs> too bloody long. On account of which, I'm going to sneak over the border and see if I can get a signal to it from closer up. But what if they catch you? There must be another way. Well, it ain't as if we can ask Thanker to do it. Besides, I shouldn't have no trouble picking me way through Grimlet now that the fighting's died down. Gods know there's enough shadows to hide in. And it beats waiting around here, twiddling me thumbs. Any road I just thought I'd let you know. Now, I'd best be... Ah, I nearly forgot. Cryles at the stones, and she wants a word. Something to do with the patients? She was getting ready to examine them again when I left. What could it be? We'd best head back then. I'm sure it's important. Yeah, I agree. I'll be sure to tell Reen exactly what you said. I'm nervous as fuck! It seems she's still examining them. Oh, I do hope it's nothing bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't wait three or four months or whatever for this. Is this one voiced? It is. It looks like it. If you don't mind me, I'm gonna drink while I listen. You're here. Good. It's good to see you, Kryle. So, how are they? Still locked in slumber, but otherwise in good physical health. For the present, at least. What? For the present? Oh no, is something wrong with them? I'm afraid there may be. I summoned you after detecting faint signs of instability in Thancred's corporeal ether. But subsequent examinations suggested all five might be affected. And when I examined them just now, my fears were confirmed. Tellingly, the degree of instability varies between them. Thancred exhibits the most notable signs, followed by Yushtola and Urianje. The twins' ether, meanwhile, remains relatively stable, but there is a change there too if one knows to look for it. Hold on. Isn't that the order they were called away in? It was. Indeed. Which leads me to believe the instability will only increase with time. Though I can but speculate, I fear this may be a symptom of a weakening link between body and soul. It's solid reasoning, Cryo. By the gods! What happens if the link is broken? I cannot say for certain. This is all unknown territory to us. Yet whatever happens, it cannot be good. Agreed. We need to do something. Mercifully, the instability is still only slight. And you may rest assured, Master Matoya and I will do everything in our power to keep it from worsening. Be that as it may, it is imperative that you find a way to restore our friends' souls to their bodies. Of course. Leave it to me. I'll do everything I can. And besides, I'm not alone. Thank you. Thank you, Cryo. But where's he even supposed to start? We had the greatest minds in the realm hunting high and low for an answer, and they ran out of places to look. Yeah, well, good thing we have another world to work with, huh? You stated in your report that the Exarch had originally intended to reverse the summoning process by means of his own death, correct? Yes. I gotta change my oh, earrings, I forgot they're still Halloween. Young fool, ready to die for the first righteous cause that came along. His plan might well have worked, but I for one am glad he never had the opportunity to see it through. I too. Even if it does mean our friends must remain stranded a while longer. <laughs> they felt there the same. There is another way, I am sure of it. And the key lies with him, with the Exarch. Pray return to the first and apprise him and the others of the situation. We meanwhile will do what we can from here. And, if the fates are kind, we will have good news to share upon your return. You can count on me, Kryle. I'm not happy right now. <laughs> I'm so sad. Um, 
Also, this is going to be a short video because I need to get this out today because I really want to. So we're going to turn this quest in, but I'm going to have to end the episode here. It's going to be a really short video. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but it's it's just I, I would love to get this out because I also have Medieval Part 5 that I need to get out today. I'm still going to record more of this, but this episode in particular is going to be really short. So I'm sorry about that. Gratia. Oh, God, that was weird. Ah, Shosan, you are returned. I hope your time in the source was suitably restful. But, of course, it wasn't. Go on. Unfortunately, them being separated is, you know, stuff story. Their corporeal ether shows signs of instability. By the gods. A possibility never even occurred to me. If you have returned in the hope that my research has yielded a solution, I fear you will be sorely disappointed. It is but a mercy we have the likes of Mistress Kryle and... Master Matoya to keep our friend's body safe while we wrestle with the problem. But I cannot forestall the separation of body and soul indefinitely. Come, the others must be told. Where the hell is Thancred and Reen? <laughs> Pray excuse my late arrival. Will Thancred and Reen not be joining us? Nay, my lady. With apologies to all, they beg leave to pursue their investigation of the empty to its conclusion. Should matters here demand their presence, however, they did assure me that they would make themselves available. Yes, of course. Then let us proceed. I, I think it best that you begin by providing a summary of Mistress Kryle's findings. Uh, of course. Your bodies are being separated from your souls for too long. Unfortunately, it's causing instability. What that means, we don't know yet. But it can't be good. And I'd rather not find out. I suppose it was only to be expected that some change would occur. Yet our souls seem unaffected. To my eye, at least. How long they will remain so is another question. Kryle is right. It is imperative we find a way to return to the source. I hope that doesn't mean they'll die, but I kind of wonder if it just means they'll get stuck here. I mean, at least that's better than dying. Perhaps an explanation of the method by which I brought you here will yield some inspiration. Perhaps. You haven't told us anything about it yet. It must be noted that I am by no means a gifted mage. In order to employ powerful magics, I must rely upon the Crystal Tower and its boundless reservoirs of energy. Well, lucky for him, we've got myself, Ishtola, Urianje, and Alfino. The magic that summoned you was no exception. It is a singular spell, adapted through painstaking effort from the technique that transported me to the first. To use an analogy, it works by cutting a hole in the fabric of reality. A hole tailored to the object of summoning through which it and it alone may pass unscathed. Though I succeeded in creating said hole, I failed to latch onto my intended target. Instead of you, the spell found those close to you and ended up summoning them in their incomplete state. I would not soon throw my life away not after the lengths you and yours went to save it. And so long as I breathe, I will spare no effort to see you safely home. But should all else fail, and your lives be at stake, there remains one sure method. It shouldn't come to that. Smack? <laughs> Even better than a smack. <laughs> What was that for? How can you even entertain such thoughts? 
You owe your life to the Warrior of Light, and you don't get to die unless he says so. I knew it was Grahatia the whole damn time, and I was trying to help him the whole damn time. There's no way we're letting that happen. Your followers await your divine judgment. I wouldn't put it as divine. <laughs> if the two of you have finished, perhaps we could return to our discussion? Rather than dwelling upon the multiple failed attempts at transference, I think it would behoove us to focus on the solitary success. True enough. Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> I would draw your attention to the fact that our friend can travel between worlds possessed not only of his body and soul, but his personal effects besides. This is no different from the teleportation magics to which we are all accustomed. Magics that allow for the transportation of those inanimate objects one considers to be an extension of oneself. Are you suggesting that simply by considering us his possessions, he could carry our souls back to the source upon his person? Well, it would be nice if things were that simple for a change. Solid theory. The vague notions of ownership seem a rather tenuous thing to stake our lives on. So much as a moment of doubt on his part and we'd be left floating in the rift. <sighs> Same with you, reasonable theory. Milady hath the right of it. The requisite fixity of belief would be too much to ask even of our friend. Yet were we to immure our souls within an object in his possession, Mayhap then our safe passage could be assured. White Auricide would, I believe, serve as a suitable vessel for this purpose. It was conceived to imprison the massy soul of an Assian and should house one of ours with relative ease. True. We would need only to ensure our soul's safe preservation inside the stone and identify a means by which they might be transferred back unto our vacant bodies. Yeah. And therein lies the other problem. But still, Soul progress. And transference. Hmm. I believe I know of someone who may be able to assist us. Yeah? On the far shore of the source, there stands a great palace built by the elves. It was forsaken in the wake of the flood, but a certain new Mo chose to make their home there soon after. Though they have long lived as a recluse, they once occupied a place of honor in Verbert's royal court, and it is said that none in all of Norvrand is more knowledgeable than they on matters of the soul. Well, I've no objection to seeking a helping hand, but if they've gone to such lengths to hide themselves away from the world, what makes you think they'd be willing to lend us one? <laughs> a worthy question. Years ago, I myself tried and failed to solicit their cooperation in the battle against the Sin Eaters. So is another problem, huh? No sooner had I begun to make my plea than they unleashed a swarm of their familiars upon me. Unlike me, however, you have curried favor with the Faith Folk. By that merit alone, I am hopeful that they would grant you an audience. Hmm. They may still be inclined to turn you away, of course, but... If their knowledge might feasibly facilitate your return home, we have to try. I do have Fail Wool on my side. So maybe she could uh, yell some sense into them. Uh, spell speak, whatever. Da, 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 da. All right. Well, unfortunately, like I said, it's going to be a short episode. I'm going to keep recording though. So, uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to get notified if you haven't already, and to check out some links that'll be popping up here on the end screen in just a moment. Hopefully, we can save our friends. I'm not gonna let anything happen to them, and I'll protect everyone. Hopefully, uh, Zenos just wants a one-on-one -on -one me, because I won't do it. I'll just have everybody gang up on him, but we'll see. He's definitely being a cause for concern, but we have other matters at hand right now. We're gonna need everyone back in the first. Wait. The source. I said the first. Anyway, love you all, and I hope your dreams come true. Peace out, everyone.